Hello, this tutorial will talk about how to draw cast shadows um, from a floating object um, in perspective method. So this is an advanced tutorial. If you haven't already, please refer to my other tutorial that talks about basic cast shadow perspective methods um, and that will help clarify a lot of what you need to know to move on to this level. So first, you start with your horizon line, vanishing points. We're going to draw a shape in two-point perspective that is floating above the ground. So we're going to see <clears throat> the sides and the bottom of the shape. And I also want to make sure that I'm drawing the back edges, kind of the hidden corner of this box. So once we have that, what we want to try to establish then is where our light source is going to be. Remember the light source determines the length of the cast shadow and how far it is cast. So that's an important part of this scenario <clears throat> is determining where you want your light source to be. The other part you need to create cast shadows in perspective is you need the shadow vanishing point which is always located directly below the light source, vertically below. And it can either be on the horizon line or slightly below the horizon line. The shadow vanishing point determines the angle of the shadow or which direction the shadow is cast. So <clears throat> The shadow vanishing point is going to go, again, remember, through the bottom edges of the object to determine the angle. Now, because this box is floating, we want to actually pull these edges down to the ground plane to determine where this box would touch the ground if it were. And basically what that visually does is it elongates the box. It creates kind of visually a long box. But this gives us points on the ground where this box would be touching if it were sitting on the ground. Um, <clears throat> These points are here, 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 and here. Now the shadow vanishing point guidelines will travel <clears throat> through these corner dots on the ground plane, marking the direction of the cast shadow, which I will show you in just a moment. Um, then we want to also mark basically the top parts of this box, the top corners. And this is very similar to the original cast shadow method. However, in that method, you only use three points. In this one, we're going to use four because it's floating. The light source guidelines will travel through these corner dots on the top of the shape, marking the length of the cast shadow. These two guidelines will work in conjunction to create the shape of the cast shadow on the ground. So I want to draw guidelines from the shadow vanishing point through these points on the ground. You can see the light source is next to the object, so it's casting the shadow to the right. Then I want to draw guidelines from the light source through the top corners. This is where it gets tricky. You want to make sure that the guidelines are where they intersect. You want to make sure that point where they intersect. So the guidelines from the light source will intersect with guideline from the shadow vanishing point. So this point is directly above this point. So they will intersect here this line and this line will intersect. And that's where you'll draw one point. You likewise these two will go together. So lightens from the guide from the light the shadow vanishing point will go through this line um, and you'll lights from the light source, sorry, guides from the light source that go through this point will touch on that line, which I'll show you in just a moment. So it's important to remember that those two, the dots are above and below each other, those will, that's where those lines will intersect. And as I draw more of them, it will become more apparent. <clears throat> so you can see this line, guidelines going through the upper front corner, and it's intersecting with the guideline from the shadow vanishing point that goes through the lower front corner in this dot right here. Then I'll do another guideline from the light source that goes through this back corner on the top and it'll intersect from the shadow vanish point guideline that goes through the back bottom corner. And we'll have a dot <coughs> that marks that location right here. <coughs> and then finally we'll go from the light source a guideline through that left upper corner and it will intersect with the guideline that comes from the shadow vanishing point through that left bottom corner. Now you'll notice 
that once I mark this, <clears throat> you'll notice that these actually line up with this right vanishing point. If you line them up this way, and if you line them up this way, they line up with that left vanishing point. So that's a good way to get to in a sense that you, you're doing it correctly. So when you do it like that. Now, because it's floating, we're actually going to use the bottom corners of the object as well. So we need to use the bottom corners of the object that are closest to the light source. <clears throat> that means that the, let's see, so it'll be this corner, this corner, and this back corner over here are the corners that are closest to the light source. So we're going to draw guidelines from the light source through those corners as well. And again, making sure they intersect at the corresponding points on the ground for the shadow vanishing point guidelines. So one will go here. And because unfortunately these um, points are all really close together, I hope it doesn't confuse the point. You might pause this and see if, you know, you'll see that I'm basically lining them up appropriately. Um, but again, like in here, right? see if we can squeeze that into that back corner. Right here. <clears throat> now you'll see that, again, when I connect all of these, it creates the shape of a box in perspective. This is kind of the, the parts that you'd see um, if it were drawn um, outlined. Of course, shadows aren't outlined. They're basically filled in like this. Um, notice the cast shadow. Again, it realigns with the left vanishing point, the right vanishing point, and the shadow vanishing point. Those are the three points that this shadow lines up with uh, when it's complete. So that's a good thing to take note of. That'll give you a good sense that your cast shadow is built correctly, um, making sure that everything lines up properly. So um, overall, I hope that makes sense. Um, tried to explain it as clearly as I could. Again, this is advanced. If you haven't already, definitely review the, um, the initial tutorials that I provide. And I will, I will also provide more cash out of tutorials in the future.